Hey guys, so today's video is in a whole different location. I hope the echo isn't too bad. Now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm speaking into existence, I feel like there's a bit of an echo. Anyway, I'm in Poland. Polish immigrant comes back to Poland. And I think Phoebe's barking in the background. We drove here after multiple tests, negative tests and many vaccinations. Later, we are in Poland. <laughs> for three weeks so I bought myself a new lamp for filming and a tripod to film and here we are filming in Poland so it's a whole different background and this is the background I'm going to be having for the foreseeable future aka three weeks so let's just get into it but my social media will be in the description along with my beauty channel anything else you might need to find also today's video is very kindly sponsored by Adam and Eve who have been sponsoring my videos for a while and I love them and you guys love them so give them some love if you want me to continue show them to you guys on your channel if you want them to keep on supporting this channel. So you can use code ANGELICA for 50% off one item of free shipping to the US and Canada. Some exclusions apply. They've been in business for over 50 years. They have 24-7 customer service. 20% of all profits go to fighting HIV around the world. 90-day no-hassle returns, discreet packaging, and many, many more. So once again, code ANGELICA for 50% off one item of free shipping to the US and Canada. Some exclusions apply, and let's get into the video. Thank you to Adam and Eve for sponsoring, and let's get into it. So we have Shane Dawson and David Dobrik, the duo making a comeback. So Shane Dawson recently obviously has been caught posting on Instagram a lot, and I've been covering all of that, just, you know, trying to decipher when he's going to come back. It all started out with some, you know, Instagram stories. That was kind of like, you know, it's there for 24 hours and it disappears. So it seems a little bit less like pressure for him, if that makes sense, to post stuff, you know, about his previous launch with the conspiracy palette and just like congratulating people. I remember he congratulated Trisha Paytas on their engagement. And obviously that then fell apart, their friendship fell apart shortly after. Then he would post on his YouTube community tab. I remember he edited one of Ryland's videos and then he posted about it on his YouTube community tab, just basically being like, go show the video some love. I love editing, I wanna get back to it. Then he would start making appearances in Ryland's vlogs, kind of like either just kind of like adding a voice in the background, saying something, making a joke. Recently he came back full force. They did that one where they bought an RV like a bus for travel and he was in that one quite a lot and then recently they did one where they were trashing not trashing but like talking about drama channels being like they're going to use this picture of me in their new thumbnails and then basically talking about how we're making more money than him which i'm like i hate the fact that shane dawson still plays this i'm poor card when he literally made millions of dollars from selling one eyeshadow palette that he probably never used i'll get into that in a minute like you made millions of dollars from the sale of one product and you're telling us that we make money from talking about you so that happened and then he recently posted an actual full instagram post that i spoke about which was like full on on his like grid basically being like he's just excited to come back to the internet he's got a lot of ideas and then we saw highland post a vlog with Shane throwing out like 50% of his makeup, which yes, declutters are very popular on beauty YouTube, uh, which is where you, you know, you get rid of old stuff, stuff you don't use anymore. But it just seemed like the, the, the whole fact of him starting his Shane Glossin channel for makeup and never using it for makeup, never really wearing makeup, never really getting good at makeup, uh, like him actually trying to get good at makeup. It just seems like him getting rid of like a bunch of makeup just seems like, yeah, I sold you guys a palette and now I'm leaving the makeup community. Even with his like makeup community leaving, post when obviously drama with him happened last year it, it, it's like you actively said oh, i'm leaving the beauty community it's so toxic you never post a makeup video you don't get good at makeup then you just get rid of a bunch of your makeup and it's like what are we supposed to think like this whole palette thing was a cash grab so that happened and people already kind of pissed off he obviously released some merch in between he would still like launch merch just not post it anywhere but his instagram stories so he would post like, yeah, like, you know, swipe up to buy merch. Like people would get emails for merch, including some mystery boxes that actually sold out twice. And now in his recent vlog with Ryland, they talk about the fact that they're actually going to be probably moving out for LA and moving into Colorado. Now that comes off, obviously Jeffree Star moved to Wyoming full time. Logan Paul's leaving to the Bahamas. A lot of people are thinking about moving to Miami, I'm pretty sure. And now they're moving to Colorado, which I don't know if it's just like the LA culture where like a bunch of people just want to get out or if it's like people that have been like cancelled on the internet don't really have many friends in LA anymore so it's just uncomfortable so they'd rather just move out to somewhere more affordable taxes like I don't know what it is but obviously they're moving to Colorado so that's happening and I just think it's like pretty interesting how big of a role he played in that vlog again like I feel like he's just like more and more on the internet he did cover his face 
so we can't get a thumbnail. But yeah, I just feel like he's probably going to move to Colorado, ditch the whole makeup scene. I feel like that's why he was getting rid of a lot of his makeup. He's going to be moving. He doesn't want to move all of that stuff. So he got rid of a lot of his makeup, kept all the like sentimental stuff. He's going to move to Colorado and I think he's going to like zone in on the conspiracy theories again. I feel like that's going to be his big comeback because I think he knows in his head, he knows that the only reason people would actually continue to watch him, even the people that don't like him, is if he posts conspiracy content because that was the thing that like really put him on the map on YouTube and it was like the thing that people loved him for. It was his conspiracy content. So I feel like if he moves to Colorado, ditch the makeup, ditch the drama, ditch the YouTube scene and just focus on conspiracy theories, I feel like genuinely, as bad as that sounds, he's going to make a comeback and he's going to be watched. And that is that for Shane Dawson for today. But then we have David Dobrik, another problematic YouTuber. So obviously you guys know David Dobrik did some vlogs. Jeff Wittek almost lost his eye because of it. Had brain surgery, had like brain, not surgery, but like, you know, he went in to get his brain checked out because he's got like a concussion. He's not seeing through one eye. He got hit into an excavator by David because David was trying to get the vlog footage or spinning him around, smacks into the, the thing. David also admits that he gets his friends drunk to get better content. And then instead of article comes out with Hannah, who is in an anonymous girl talking about her experience with Dirty Dom are uh, wording her when she was drunk in one at one of David's kind of parties in her in his earlier vlogs uh, where she was basically given alcohol while underage under the age of 21 I mean like underage for alcohol and then David you know just filmed the vlog then we can see a picture at 1 20 a.m where she's like blackout drunk and he's standing there so he obviously saw that she was blackout drunk so that's the you know, backstory for that. He then lost a bunch of sponsors. And by bunch, I mean all of them. He also had to step down at Dispo as one of the investors and co-founders. His monetization on YouTube was also cut. And then he left, he basically posted one apology video that wasn't accepted very well. And then he posted a second one, which actually had a really good like to like ratio, even though I don't think it was much different. He just cried in it. Like I personally didn't buy it, but like his fans did. And then he left for about three months and he's now back to posting regular vlogs as if nothing happened as if nothing happened. And then recently he was in Miami because Natalie was in a Sports Illustrated issue and she also did swim week in Miami where she like walked down runway in swimsuits. So she did that and then because they were in Miami they were getting out of the car to get into a hotel and one of his ex fans comes up to him and films him. It's really awkward, I'll play the whole thing for you guys. Hey Natalie, who gave the alcohol to the young girls? Was it your boyfriend Todd? Was it who gave the alcohol to the young girls? David, you're not sick with your return bro. Who gave the alcohol to the young girls at that night? You're asking a crazy question that literally we don't know that. Somebody, somebody does. And your return was just so, it was. This isn't the time and place to do that. It is, bro. It happened. You, really weird you, you, you right deleted now? everything off it's your bio. You deleted everything off your Wait, bio. Excuse me, sir. You, you deleted everything off your He's bio. He's harassing us right now. It's fine. And you came back just in time for swimwear week in Miami? I honestly Dude, I, there's the whole culture you have going on of taking measure of drunk people. In the last vlog, Susie getting drunk and everything. Bro. Susie, is this I true? said I've been trying to Wait, oh, oh, oh my god. god. Are you okay? Oh my, oh my god. god. Do you remember me? I was at the fountain blue, I was such a big fan of you, bro. I was wearing the trench coat and everything. I, I appreciate that, bro, but but you don't know the details of things. Nah, bro, I don't look up to you anymore, dude. Fuck yeah, and look at her smiling. You can't it's, and it's, everything it's, about Trisha just ended up being true, bro. There's a time and place for everything, bro. It's awkward because it's just like an un like I would never do it because I hate confrontation, like uncomfortable. But their reaction also gave me a little bit of an ick. You know, Natalie was like, "What are you talking about?" When he was like, "Who gave the girls alcohol? Like, who was it? Was it your boyfriend Todd?" Because it's it's a it's a it's an accusation being thrown around right now that it was Todd that bought the alcohol back. And Todd's obviously dating Natalie, Natalie being David's personal assistant, but she calls herself the vice president of David Dobrik LLC. Like, and that's a whole different conversation. So she's obviously pissed off that this guy approaches her and accuses her boyfriend of buying alcohol, which she allegedly did. Um, then he comes up to David and he asks the same thing. And that, and David seems very apologetic. Like, I'm not standing up for him, not defending him whatsoever, but he seems a little bit more apologetic. He actually stands there and he continues this conversation, tries to hear this person out and talk to them. And, you know, but Natalie just seems... Hmm, a little bit angry that this is happening, you know, that her boyfriend's being accused of this stuff and she calls this all conspiracy theories and that he's harassing them. I just think, look, this is uncomfortable, don't do this. Like, don't come up to people filming them and like ask them uncomfortable questions. I think it's just like a weird thing to do. But it does show a side of Natalie that I'm not very keen on. Mainly calling this conspiracy theories because uh, what part of it is a conspiracy theory? Is it the accusations of R? word is the accusations of the alcohol like what is a conspiracy theory because when this article came out natalie actually posted this big instagram speech being like 
I am so sorry to the girls. I stand behind the victims. And now you're calling what part of the story a conspiracy theory? Like what part of it do, do you think is a conspiracy theory? Because you calling it a conspiracy theory makes it sound like you think it's all a lie, right? But on top of that, she also goes on the BFS podcast and they ask her about the David Obrick situation. It's one of the first questions. And she says that David Obrick was just like, tangled up in some drama because it wasn't him, it was Dirty Dom, even though, you know, David's the one producing all the content, making money from the content, coming up with the ideas, he should be making sure that everything is done in a health and safe way. So yes, Dirty Dom is the one doing the, the crime, but David Dobrik and the vlog squad almost facilitated the crime because they helped to create that environment for Dirty Dom to feel comfortable doing that around them. So I just think, you know, putting all the brain on one person, when there's like a bunch of moving pieces in that story is tunnel vision. Anyway, she basically says that David is a nice guy and would never do this. And he's an open book and like everything else on the internet is what's on the internet and that he's nothing to hide. So basically she's just still sticking with the fact that there are just these lies about David. So this whole like apology, you know, what she said was that this is all a lie, it's all a conspiracy theory. So in reality, David's apology doesn't really make sense because you, if you're apologizing, but then Natalie is saying that you're a good guy who did nothing wrong. It really just doesn't add up to me. Like, it doesn't make sense what you're apologizing for. So is the apology fake or is her now saying all of this fake? Because if David didn't do anything wrong and it was a different guy and David just got tangled up in it, then why did he film two apology videos? And if he did nothing wrong and no one did anything wrong except for Dirty Dom, then why did she post an apology video and then call it conspiracy theory? I just think it's all just really weird. I'd rather she just not spoken out. I'd rather she said, hey, Let's do this podcast, but don't bring up the David stuff. Like, no comment on that. She also mentioned how she can't talk about a lot of this stuff. I'm assuming maybe there's some legal action behind the scenes, but like, who is she suing? Who's suing who? Are they suing the girls? Are they suing Dirty Dom? Are they suing, who are they suing? And what's happening? Anyway, I thought that whole interview was just really weird. And I thought when they got caught in front of the hotel, it was just a really uncomfortable situation as a whole. And I just think it a lot was contradicting each other. So David can't make an apology video for you to then say he's a good guy who did nothing wrong. Because if he's a good guy who did nothing wrong, then the apology doesn't make sense. And I think that is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, anything you want to comment down below, and subscribe to this videos every time something happens. So hit that bell to be notified when that's happening. Social media links and the links in the description. Also use code angelicaadamini.com for 50% off one off item with free shipping to the US and Canada. Some screenshots apply. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.